Hello, everyone. In the book of Revelation, we have three chapters that we're going to put together now instead of two. Chapters 14, 15, and 16. We are right in the middle of this vision. Things are getting a little bit crazy, but don't worry. We're going to walk through it, and you'll be able to read these chapters on your own and get as much out of it as you could possibly imagine. Chapter 14, then. What to expect? We have another reference to 144,000 in heaven, similar to chapter 7. Remember, this 144,000 is a multiple of 12, and 12 represents the entire Christian church, Old Testament and New Testament. So don't think of a literal number again, just like all the rest of the numbers in the book of Re Revelation aren't literal. The first half of the chapter is a victory celebration. The second half of the chapter is also a victory, but specifically a victory because the enemies of God and the enemies of us are going to be shown the way to judgment. Some pictures in chapter 14 that you need to look out for. In verse 1, you have Mount Zion. Mount Zion is in the name of the hill in Jerusalem on which the temple once sat. Mount Zion is oftentimes figurative for heaven. This is the place where God dwells, and he's going to dwell with his people forever. In verse 8, there's Babylon the Great. Babylon was the ancient enemy of God's people in the Old Testament times. They were the nation that came across the desert, really up and around the desert, and they destroyed Jerusalem, they knocked down the walls, they burned down the temple, and they took the people into exile. Well, ever since then, Babylon represents the enemy of the Christian church. And so here it has the same kind of effect, because by the day of John, Babylon as a nation and as a people really didn't exist anymore, and they don't exist today. Chapters 15 and 16 are placed together because they have to do with the same thing, and chapter 15 is relatively short. What to expect? Well, you see seven last plagues and then seven bowls of God's wrath poured out upon the earth in these chapters. It really has to do with the destruction of all of God's enemies, and that includes all unbelievers, those who do not trust in Jesus as their Savior. So what are some pictures in, in chapters 15 and 16? Well, these bowls of wrath that start in chapter 16 might refer to the spiritual destruction or the spiritual punishment on the earth during these end times, the you know, last few moments before judgment day comes. In verse 13, the dragon, a beast, and the false prophet are mentioned. Well, in chapters 12 and 13, if you remember, there was the dragon, Satan, the beast, and that's probably the beast out of the sea, so ungodly governments, and then the false prophet, probably the beast out of the earth, which would be spiritual enemies of the Lord. In verse 16, we have a word that you certainly have heard before. There's movies and books all about it. The word Armageddon. Armageddon usually refers to, in our culture, this last final massive battle at the end of time. Well, it kind of refers to that in the book of Revelation here. But Armageddon is simply the day of God's victory. There's not a massive battle. The Lord comes down and he pronounces judgment. He wins. And so do we. That's why this is a vision of victory. For those not destroyed by the seven plagues and the seven bulls of God's wrath. Because they, we, are clothed with faith in Christ. Open your Bibles now. Turn to chapters 14, 15, and 16 of the book of Revelation. Let me know if you have any questions, and I hope you enjoy reading God's word and this wonderful vision about the end times.